Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Anthony's. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Leo and Dolores Granboy. Just a note about our procedure this morning at Mass. At communion time, we ask that you please remain kneeling or sitting in your places. Father will come to each of you at your pews to distribute communion. For those of you in the balcony and funeral alcove, you can also stay in your places and communion will be brought to you as well. Please stand. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares can destroy, be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind all of our failures and shortcomings that we may worthily partake in this Holy Eucharistic celebration. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to the people of goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, you we adore you. We glorify you. We, we give, give you thanks, thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. The glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the other of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. 
Give her a reward for her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are, are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed, blessed are, are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed, blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable, a man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and a third one to each according to his ability. Then he went away immediately. The one who received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five, uh, he said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I know you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of here, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that 
I could have got it back with interest on my return. Now then, take the talent from, me, from him and give to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as we are in the penultimate Sunday of the liturgical year, the three readings speak not only about the end of the liturgical year, but also they speak about the end of all things and the preparations one need to make without losing one's time. The Bible, we read in the book of Genesis that God has created us in the image and likeness of, of, of his own self. And he has given us enough blessings and graces. But what do we do? We look at others. We compare ourselves with others. As a result, we lose, you know, time and talents. But here, God is asking us to use the talents that are given to us maximum to build the, the kingdom of heaven here on this earth. Once we do that, then we all will be saved. The first reading, we hear about the wonderful wife. I don't have one, but you all have. Okay. The first reading speaks about the person who has got this worthy wife. And the reading says, she is more worth than pearls. You know, she cannot be bought by price. You know, she uses all her talents not to bring evil, but good. So it is a right moment to think about the women's in our life who helped us or who has influenced us one way or the other, maybe as kids, as young adult, as a young man, elderly person, as sons, you know, we might have our own mothers, your own wives, daughters, niece, your grandparents, you know, these are the people might have done some wonderful things in your life. So it is a right moment even to all of us to thank the Lord and pray for them. The responsorial psalm, even the first reading, speaks about the fear of the Lord. You know, it says, blessed are those who fear the Lord. You know, what do you mean by fear the Lord? You know, the soul that is afraid of losing God's goodness in them, that's called the fear of the Lord. You know, it's one of the beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit. There is also another fear, fear of punishment. You know, when you do something wrong, then you are afraid that you can be found. Your guilt can be seen by others. Then you can be, as a result, you can be punished. But here, the woman, the wife who, whom we heard about her in the first reading, you know, the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. You know, because she is very attentive and very much careful that the goodness of God that she has shall not be weakened. She shall not lose it. So she is very much attentive and care, careful, you know. 
That's what one need to be. Then she uses all her talents in a worthy way and brings only good to her household and the people who were in and around her. So today, the readings are inviting all of us, you know, especially the women, our own parents, you know, daughters, niece and niece, you know. We need to utilize the talents that God has given us in a worthy way to bring about good to the kingdom of God. Coming to the parable of today is one of the, you know, uh, important parable. When you speak about the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, we have three parables. The parable about the wise and the foolish virgins, the talents, and the lost to judgment. All these three parables speaks about the preparation and the end of the world and using the grace of God in the right way. First of all, the parable we find, you know, the master. Anyone who is on a journey don't have to give anything to his servants or to his slaves. So the master could have chosen the option of the third slave, you know, the third servant. What are the options? At first, he could have deposited the money in the bank for safekeeping. Then when he is written on his journey, he could have taken, taken it, okay? That may be one. Or he could have dug a pit in his backyard and put all the talents that he had, you know, as his possessions, and buried it well. So when he comes back after his journey, he could have took it, you know? That may be the second option that he could have chosen. But he goes for the third option. He divides them and gives to his servants according to their own capacities and abilities. You know, where you find the goodness of the master and the dependence he had on his servants, the faith that he had on all the three slaves that he had. The joy of the servant is seen in the first slave who received five talents. As soon as he received the five talents, he goes at once and trades with it and makes five more. The same way the one who received the two. You know, when you speak about trading, it involves a lot of risk, discussion, discernment, then decision. Moreover, demands trusting, surrendering, giving up, and letting it go. You know, a lot of things. To make a business, it is not that easy. You may say, I can make $1 million per year, you know. If you make it, then you will know how much struggle you should do, you should face in your life. So, keeping the master's goodness in their mind and heart, the first two servants worked hard day and night, made five more and two more, and brought 100% profit. You know, that's what you and I need to do in our daily life. But the two slaves who received unequal properties, one received five talents, another received two talents, but the reward is same. What was the reward that the servants received? Fullness of joy. You know, though we receive unequal talents, graces, and blessings in our life, the reward is eternal joy, which is equal to everybody. When you read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, the parable about the sower, you know, the seed fell on different soil, and all the soil did not bring hundredfold harvest. Some brought 30, 60, 90, and 100. 
according to its own soil. So also we, you know, we may receive unequal talents, graces and blessings, but the reward is same. So you and I need to work hard. Coming to the third slave, whose attitude is something surprising, you know? First of all, you know the importance of talent. If I say one talent is equal to 6,000 denarius, one denarius for one day daily labor. So it is the one talent would mean if a person works for 16 long years, how much one could afford, you know? So it's a great sum of money. When you say that one talent would mean it's not a one buck or two buck, okay? It is a person's lifelong invest, maybe, what do you say, the hard working. If you work for 16 years and all that you have it in your bank is what called one talent. So the person who received more, according to the Bible, he did not receive less. And the master gave according to everyone's capability and ability. So he did not think about it, you know. First of all, he did not take any risk. He never reflected about what, why, how, and when of the master's giving. Then he also never thought about why he received that one talent. You know, that's very important, how much you receive. You know, you should think about it. He never thought about it, first of all. You know, as a result, what he does? You know, his motive was only one thing, fear. When he had such fear, he fails to see the goodness of the master. As a result, he complains. You know, the way he complains. Master, I know you were a demanding person harvesting where you did not plant. You know? how unworthy the slave was. Though he was given so much, he never trusted in himself. That's what I said in the beginning of the homily. We also become, most of the time, like the third slave, we compare ourselves. Oh, he has a good car. He has a very good phone. Why, you don't have? We all have, <laughs> is it? But why do we compare ourselves with others? It's very much important. When you compare yourselves with others, your gifts with others, then you become a person unworthy of your gifts. So coming back to the third slave, you know, first of all, he fails to cooperate with the Spirit of the Lord who is in him. As a result, he digs a hole and puts all that the Master gave and buries it. So it's the right time to introspect and see which slave do you reflect in your daily life. All the more, the parable also teaches four important lessons. You know, first of all, the first lesson that we learn is God gives each person different gifts. So, how do we use our talents, our gifts in our daily life? Do I utilize it fully or just like a third slave as I just, you know, bury my talent? The second lesson, our work is never complete. Would mean the two servants who made five and two more talents, the master did not tell, so you are going to rest from today. He says, I will give you, I will keep you in charge of many more things. So your responsibility grows higher and higher when you become too much trustworthy. You know, so for our hard work, there is no end. The third lesson, the person who does nothing will be punished when you do not utilize your gifts, your blessings. Then you are... You have to be punished. Then the fourth lesson that what we learn from the parable is 
to the one who has more will be given the one who has not even what he has will be taken away so here you can find a lot of uh, it looks like robbing from the poor and giving to the rich you know it's not so when you do not use your talents that will be given to someone else so you and i need to work hard so dear brothers and sisters it is by living that we discover our talents and it is by using them we grow in a strong faith so let us all hope forward and use our talents in our daily lives that when we say goodbye to this world the loving god would utter the same encouraging word to all of us like well done good and faithful servant come share your master's joy so for that grace let us continue to pray let the name of jesus be praised forever amen amen i have i have as promise of faithfulness in preparing to receive the sacraments of confirmation and first holy communion some of the students of saint anthony's are here today to sign the book of enrollment i invite all those students preparing for confirmation to come forward at this time erin phoenix and nolan At baptism you became a member of the church sharing in the life of the holy spirit today each of you are asked to take a step of commitment are you thankful for the gift of faith you received at baptism jesus taught us to be a christian we must make god a priority in our lives share our love through service and stand up for the truth are you willing to follow jesus and live as christian are you willing to commit yourselves to fully participate in preparing for your confirmation and first holy communion by attending religious education classes doing works of service and spending time in prayer you have confirmed your intention to fully prepare for confirmation and first holy communion and live as a christian by signing the book of enrollment before mass <coughs> these students are in need of our prayers as they continue to prepare to receive the sacraments as a parish we must live as an example for these students and support them in becoming full active members of parish community We ask you to bless these young people who are preparing for the sacraments of confirmation and first holy communion. May their enthusiasm and commitment to their faith calls us all to renewal of our own faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever. And Teva. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the life of our last. Dear brothers and sisters, trusting in the mercy and providence of the Lord, let us place all our prayers and petitions before him. That the church may give her faithful the grace to learn how to use the treasures that they have for the good of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have been elected to lead will respect and protect all human life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing anxiety, depression, and other mental illness, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may fill their minds and hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here today may stay wide awake and sober, watching for the coming of Christ, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering of our parish community and families, we pray especially for Mindy Donovan, all those affected by COVID-19, and for all those on our prayer chain, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Charlotte Hines, John Heiser, Larry Metcalf, Monsignor Joseph Sanger, Leonard Falk, and these names from our Book of Remembrance. Cliff Holine, Jr., Bernard Holine, Larry Iverson, Jr., Lonnie Iverson, Harold Holine, Sharon Bredmeyer, Leo Glatt, Laurel Davidson, Michael Schnepp, Nathan Schott, Karen Schott, Murray Maus, Baron and Leona Johnson, James Johnson, Inez and Severin Johnson, Mary and Joseph Randall, Walter and Nina Carlson, George and Thelma Mayne. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we try to be faithful in all we do. Forgive us when we fail and guide us in response to these prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the price of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, host. heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by the cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. A Lamb of God, God you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Yet I could not see within 
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. 
In this time of COVID-19, families are in need more than ever. Please consider donating food, money, or your time to help out our St. Vincent de Paul Conference assemble and or deliver Thanksgiving food baskets, food baskets for families in need. Find out more in this week's bulletin. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all 